Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Sound Japanese Canadian to Me, stories from the stage. In this podcast, we are taking a look at Japanese Canadian artists across the country in order to catalog some of the ideas and the thoughts that are happening right now, both artistically and politically. Now for this episode, we are headed to the interior of BC, down in Nelson, to speak with Hiramoto Ide. Without giving too much away, how about a quick sneak peek into the world of Hiramoto? I made a piece with a chainsaw. It's never worked. It's crazy. Because I'm not Canadian enough. Because ah. I'm Japanese. You're not Canadian enough for a chainsaw? No. This interview really was a delight, and I hope you have as much fun as I did talking with Hiramoto. I'll invite you now to take your seats here in the theater of the mind as we get ready for a really special piece and a special conversation. Lights up on Hiramoto Ida. My name is Hiramoto Ida. This is my story from the stage. Slowly, slowly, lights going up. There's no set on the stage. Empty space. There's not even drape or black curtain behind or front. Just a bare brick stage. Lights go up, but still no one is there. Maybe 50 seconds, 60 seconds. Still known is there. People are wondering, um, where is he? Where is Hiromoto Ida? We never had that name. Maybe he forgot about the show. Maybe he's sitting among the audience beside you. It sounds like he's a Japanese man, so we should look for some kind of Japanese man everywhere. But somehow you cannot find it. And then slowly you could see bubbling right is floating everywhere in the theater, not just the stage. You're in the audience, wall, entrance, down the aisles, and then stage hitting a few times. And then bang, there's uh, me. Hiromoto Ida, on the corner of the stage, not the center yet. He's kind of roaring like a little ball, and he roaring come towards the center, like a make like a little ball. And then slowly he is starting opening. He is not that young. He got lots of gray hair and costume doesn't have any costume but it's not naked it's uh i don't know like a surround wrap you could put in surround wrap on your body and then that's his starting okay, okay. and then and then slowly so yeah. slowly <laughs> you see me <laughs> your host <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull some of the uh, uh, the saran wrap. Like roll. And he, yeah, you roll, you roll, and then we hit the edge of the stage, maybe, and we start yeah. a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know how to stop. Like uh. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a whole piece right there. I know. <laughs> That's great. Uh, thanks, Hiro. Uh, this uh, is all improvisation. Great introduction to to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess a, a brief welcome. Who are you? What do you do? You live in Nelson, BC. Yeah. You, in the you were born in Tokyo? Yes. And you studied acting in Japan? Yes. And then you came over to Vancouver? Yes. A few decades ago now? No. <laughs> 1987. Wow, I was one year old. There's a no, <laughs> no uh, smartphone. And we were both in Vancouver. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, was born, I was born in Vancouver. I grew up in Burnaby. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then you got you got roped into dance in Vancouver. Yes. Somehow. How did that ha- how did how did you take that step into dance? Well, in Japan when I uh training as an actor, I'm still we have like a dance class, like a mm-hmm. Japanese uh, no theater, also Nichibu, Japanese traditional dance with the wearing kimono and stuff. Also, like a modern dance, like a West style dance. So we have to take those class, and then, and then I always liked it moving, using my body more, hmm. not so much just talking, talking. And then uh, also when I see a theater in Tokyo, most theater just like playing, so talking, talking. But uh, I really liked. Uh, Physical theater, I guess, when you say now. Mm. I don't like somehow say physical theater. It's kind of... <laughs> you don't, don't like it? <laughs> it's experimental ah. theater, that time. I, I use dance theater. Dance theater, yeah. I, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, and then, uh, so when I came to Vancouver, it's, it's a really long story. It's a grandpa's long story, so I won't tell a long <laughs> But anyway, I met someone who knows Karen Jameson dance, Karen Jameson dance company. So she introduced me and then uh, I didn't know anything. Like I'm not a dancer, right? I'm not a dancer. I'm not gonna wear those tight stuff. And then, <laughs> so, uh, then I have no idea. I just come to Canada because mountain, not from dance. I just come here to get the nature. You know, yeah, you, uh, I, I read you were looking at being a, a mountain guide at one point. How do you know those things? <laughs> Good studying. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, kind of yeah, <laughs> should I go to uh, uh, France, like those, you know, Alps mountain to uh-huh. become a guide or to go to Canada? So I tried to aim in Whistler first to uh, uh, live in Whistler. At that time, Whistler didn't have anything, just like uh, still building so many hotels. So sad and nothing happening. This construction, bunch of construction. So I don't want to stay here. It's nothing happening. So I went to Vancouver. But anyway, and then then I met someone and then oh why don't you try dance? And then do they pay? I asked like, oh, yeah, they pay weekly. Like, what? They pay. Okay. And then, you know, in Tokyo never really actor doesn't get paid that much. Everybody has a second job. And then so uh, I was fearless because you know I'm not a dancer, so I don't have to move like a dancer i just did that was, yeah. that was my experience too i, yeah. I started in acting uh, oh, really? yeah yeah i went to the U- university of calgary through the drama department yeah. oh. and then theater led to kids theater which led to yeah. physical theater which yeah. led to movement and dance contemporary uh, dance and uh, how come did you decide to uh, do theater like a really honest dream. Well, in high school, there's that one kind of career planning course that challenged you, like, really, like, let's think about it. What do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Like, uh-huh. what, what could you imagine yourself as? Yeah. And the most enjoyable job that I could think of was a drama teacher. I never fathomed being a professional at it, but, uh-huh. but being like a, a theater teacher. Uh, a drama teacher it made a lot of sense. I really dug my drama teacher. Um, no, the performer. Had... No, I didn't. I didn't think it. I didn't think of performing. Is that because like uh, more reality? You want to get job? Yeah. Paid, right? Yeah, and and who yeah. like as a kid, especially I don't know. I don't. Know, maybe you had a different experience, but as a yeah. kid, I was like, who do I know that's a professional actor or professional yeah, dancer? Right. Like that's just so far out of my imagination oh, at the time. Yeah. Yeah. and it wasn't until I got to university and was yeah. like oh you you all want to be like doing this as a profession mm-hmm. we can do that <laughs> I don't know can we <laughs> yeah, t- yeah exactly I don't know uh, I mean we're still doing it I guess so <laughs> yeah, I guess and, and as you spoke about that fearlessness in the same way I approached theater as, yeah. as I approached dance is I have nothing to lose. Um, How did you approach dance, though? Did you like? Did you go to dance company, or you were just? I started, have, have you heard of Denise Clark with One Yellow Rabbit? Mm. And she does a lot of physical theater. She yeah, does a lot yeah, of like, yeah. Vo, vo, vocab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
for university, I studied under the rabbits, and that led to my participation in the summer lab. Oh. And then I became Denise Clark's assistant uh, oh. director for some of her physical Assistant teachers. director. Hooray. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> uh, and so that was kind of the, a few of the dominoes that fell into place. <laughs> oh, I love that. So that's good. They must and, drop you. But taste. you too, hey? Uh, you, you caught on with the dance company, and, and before long, you were uh, uh, a company member. Yeah, I know. Then... Uh, did you take a dance class? Eventually, yeah. Yeah, I had to get my technical training <laughs> a little higher. Yeah, that was really hard. Like, you know, among the all professional, right? They, yeah. like, they're good. Oh, yeah. Like, that muscle. Like, yeah. The muscle of seeing something once and then being able to repeat it in your body. Yeah. So that's great. incredible. That's so incredible. I can't remember. So I kept basically fast, like two years, I kept watching everybody's feet and then go this and go this and then I couldn't just fall and then I get really you know depressed like oh I'm not good like just like this so fast to mm. you know, once teacher said one two three three four five and I never count ah. I hated count really yeah like so ah. it's just like I don't count so I just go with uh, this flow and then mm. uh, yeah they are fast so I had a bored uh, spot here from stress Wow. Like, uh, yeah, I lose my hair. That wow. I was like 30. No, 25, 27. For you to stick around though, even I mean, even for two years, if yeah. you weren't technically the strongest, what were you good at in that in that role in that company? What was your strong point? I think the train as an actor. Also, that's a good question. I was thinking because I couldn't speak English that well. So in the society, that city, you don't have a place to be except on the stage. So this is my place, right? So mm. this is my soul. If I don't have a desk, I'm not exist in here in Canada. When you go rehearse and improvisation, people kind of, you know, let's do it, kind of really more relaxing. But uh, I try to go to always to that edge, like if I lose this, I don't have anything. Like I'm not exist. People doesn't see me. So that kind of edge was there. Like you know, the boxer, when you're no famous, no money, they like you know that. that. Yeah, the, the stakes are high. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And then that something when you watch people, those people are like, oh my god, what's happening with him? Like really, they have some droning there. Something grab you like. Why he has to go that far? Mm. What I'm interesting about him, wow. you know, that totally hundred percent on the stage. Yeah, and then maybe he doesn't mind if after he, after he died this show, that kind of you know. <laughs> wow. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. There's something. Uh, there's performers that draw your eye, and you're not sure why sometimes. Yeah. And and some are just technically masterful. Yeah. You yeah. can do absolutely yeah. anything. Yeah. And, and some have some kind of internal life going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some, whether it's a, I always love to think of it in story. And that's what my acting has given my dance is that mm. no matter what movement I'm doing, mm. I, can, I can figure out a story. The why. That's right. <laughs> I found that with the Karen. Like, you know, I'm an actor, right? Do, do this, do that, do that, do it all there. And they can ask, can, how come I suddenly roll here? Like I kept asking the inner reason, emotional reason, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's okay. Just do the count. Five, three. No, no. You have to move <laughs> faster, like faster. Because in you know, acting, acting, is, they, sometimes they talk too much. They smoke and drink. And again, they talk about inside. What's the emotional hair? Blah, 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 blah. Too much talking and thinking. I found it sometimes just to move. Mm. And when you're moving it, Emotional come after, right? Mm -hmm. like, uh, it's mm -hmm. not always okay. I'm this sad, so I'm gonna uh, sad. But it's I'm not sad. But when your body go like this, and then you could see it, you're feeling kind of changing inside. Now I'm just thinking, no, no, no. Sometimes just the moving is good too, too, mm. because in your real life, right? You 
don't plan anything, but just and the body change your feeling, but then suddenly emotion will come after when you really think about it. So that's <laughs> like, you know, what's really reality is like uh, different. So that's, I was quite nice to learn the dancing movement. Just shut up and just move. <laughs> I want to encourage our listeners right now to really picture, I think both me and Hiro, very physically active as, <laughs> as, we're, as we're speaking <laughs> about this. We're all over the, the, the map here. <laughs> But but I, I would agree, in a way, my theater training felt like it had to go through words and through my brain first. Yeah. Yeah. And then, it, and then it, it came out through a certain filter and it didn't feel, it didn't resonate. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in the dance practice, it was complete opposite. It's like, do this movement, yeah. you figure out why. Yeah, but it, yeah that's because my, I'm not sure. But also maybe it's a good thing you have a bridges, you know, for dance and acting because you could see from different approach mm. you have many ways to make when you create right like you creating a show it's different if you performer just performer same things if you just perform as among you know do this movement mm. but like what you said you could make all the story inside that makes really strong to for the audience watching mm. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, doing, you're doing same movement with dancer B and then Kunji, but somehow I kept watching Kunji. I don't know why they're doing same things, but Kunji have something inside. Like mm. sometimes I interesting when you go perform and watch dance. I know I watching movement, but I watch their face and their eye, mm. like a face expression. I do lots of face. Ex- I I could say I'm a face dancer. Sometimes I don't move. I just put like this black screen and then showing my face like this. <laughs> you face dance with, with music. <laughs> so it's called face dancer. That's great. Especially I... when you're getting old. <laughs> Easier on the body, hey? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so how do you, here's my next question. How do you know when it is? when your piece that you're developing is going to be dance or theater or face dance? You know, I wasn't creator at all. I was just dancer. Mm. I like saying I was just dancer. So finally, I am get the free from this dance things because I was working in dance company for like seven, eight years and then working with all those choreographer. Still in within your body, mm. you have their choreographer for leftover. So when try to make a first time like a choreograph, like I'm doing their movement, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, no, this is not me. Like, this is not me. So I end up like, what's me? Then I'm just standing still in the <laughs> rehearsal studio. Like, there's nothing in me, my movement. I don't like choreograph. Like, mm. Doesn't really matter go this way or go more this way. Right. Like uh, I like making more story. Like uh, when you apply the grunt, <laughs> yeah. you apply as a dance. But these days my movement getting getting closer to more theater play. Then starting not dancing that much. Then I always feel bad to applying money from dance section of the Canada Council. I agree. I had the same thing, and and I I applied for both dance and theater. Yes, yeah, don't Come talk. About they're, they're not listening. I, I don't know if they're tuning into this. Canada Council, if you're listening, turn off your pod, <laughs> just mute for a second. But I did the same thing, and and I applied to both, and because I am a playwright, and I'm a, I'm an actor, and there's some pieces that have zero dance, but I got I got denied as <laughs> as as an actor, as a theater artist. Yeah. And I got accepted as a dance artist. Okay. Similar. I feel yeah. kind of weird about saying, well, here's my dance application. Yeah. But who cares? It's okay. These days, finally, like, you know, hero, don't worry about it. Just make what you want to see, right? Mm-hmm. Your imagination. It's okay. Just don't be afraid. Just be you. Imagine what you want to see. Mm. You know, you know that feeling when you yeah. make so hard though. But that's the fun part of making, right? Yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, yeah. every piece has its own uh, ecology. That's right. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me a bit more about the process of finding your voice. Like yeah, how long, really how long did it take you to, from standing still to finding what you wanted to say? I want to hear about that process from you because I'm having, I always want to ask people, like not just dance people, because <laughs> for me, how to make is these days, there's a, like the last piece I made a birthday present for myself. Yes. That was, I really loved it. And then, uh, all the process was the, the music called Birthday Present for Myself by Pablo Carmano, Russian composer. That triggered my somewhere. And then, you know, it's like those uh, magnet go into the sand and then all the sound coming into the magnet. Wow, beautiful. That wow. kind of image. I have everything. I had it before, like, uh, you know, even two years ago, three years ago. You know, when you make, you have the idea, but didn't happen. Put in somewhere and then under the drawer somewhere, disappear. And then, no, this is another idea, good idea, but no, really, I'm not sure. So go to another drawer. And then those things suddenly, oh, yeah, I could use that one. Oh, I could use that one. Oh, I could even that. Then just starting. And then all those ingredients is like, uh, just feels like I'm the, the chef. You know, should I make a Chinese or Greek or Canadian burger? But maybe make a international food, right? Like yeah. a Greekish Japanese sushi roll with a pizza sauce on top. <laughs> <laughs> I guess speaking of that, how, how much of your artistic food is flavored by your experience as a Japanese or, or a Japanese Canadian? Like a, I think what's different Japanese Canadian and Japanese me, like me, English. You guys speak perfect, beautiful English um, with a Japanese kind of half Japanese kind of face. That perfect. So, know. yeah, it's basically I cannot change this body and face, right? As a performer, this is our like uh, instrument. Mm -hmm. So we can't change our instrument from a violin to a piano. So I thought I was thinking that's the good things about contemporary dance. Like uh, ratio doesn't really show that much unless you really make a theme, you know. But it's like a movie or whatever the audience uh, audition I do. Always totally Japanese, right? Japanese businessman, Japanese scientist, uh, yakuza man, just all same. Like uh, you know. So this is my tool. So you can't really go wider imagination mm -hmm. but the dance and theater could go imagination also when you're creating i i'm getting really tired of my face my movement always same Did you that? And maybe you're still young so you don't have that like <laughs> oh i'm doing the same things over and over like uh, especially maybe because i'm like i live in this mountain place i don't see any, anything else Hmm. So uh, I can really tired. I I, I will dance with that face, like you know, just disappearing from me or from you, and then just pure movement. Hmm. And then so I was thinking mask at one point, and then if it's a mask, I always like no mask rather than other European mask. So I was idea. I was thinking, and then they matching with this. So that was when you say Japanese taste is Japanese flavor. But also when I made that piece, I video uh, <clears throat> I show it to my Japanese friend in Japan, I send it. They see more totally different than Canadian audience because mm. I, oh, I saw that the river, uh, river was there. That must be, it's called Sans River. Sans river in Japanese is when you arrive, when you die, you cross the river and then you go to the other side. That's mm. the people who left uh, this world. You know, I don't say death, the death world, but because that kind of like a zombie feeling like this. Right. <laughs> Just yeah, the yeah. Other, other side of the river. Sure. And then I was, I didn't consciously write or anything, but I did this river movement when he is dying. And then my 
Japanese friend, he got it right away. That was the sun's river you're doing, did you? And then, yeah, I guess so. Like, that's right. Maybe I am really Japanese, that part. And then Canadian audience didn't have those concepts for the cross the river after you die, right? Mm. So those are interesting. Just come from like as a, like a little film from my body or my brain. So those flavor, I guess, come out from me without uh, noticing. Yeah, you've spoken a bit about, you said that your, your home was on the stage. Like mm. that's, that's where you feel um, at home. And, and now with this conversation of audiences not exactly connecting to the work, perhaps, um, mm. In, in a full way, can you speak about your experience of, of finding yourself in between being at home in Japan and being at home in Canada, in, in BC? Japan is getting very far away. And this is a good, really, uh, timing you ask me this. Uh, now I live in Canada longer than the one I grew up in Japan. Wow. But I still like told them, oh, look, I'm Japanese, same as like, you know. 30 years ago, but when I go back to Japan, first, like the way they talk, very vague, like here in English, I think this, I'm sad, I'm mad, mad. like, where's my reservation disappear, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, me. But in Japan, I started finding they just mingling, disappearing with the flow of the river. So that's, I could feel like, oh, that's what they're talking about. It is good, also it is bad. Somehow your life is just disappear among with the other and then you die. And just, I didn't like it when I was young, 25. You Someone know? else brought up the, the, the Japanese saying of the nail that hangs out gets hammered. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Right. That yeah. idea of don't stick out, don't yeah. be different. Yeah. Doing those frock things. Have you done? Yeah, yeah, I've done flocking. Yeah, lovely. Frocking, Japanese people are good with the frocking because they don't say me, me, like I'm the hair, right? Mm. They go over the floor. They, so they're really good sensing the other people's movement or emotional. Mm-hmm. And when they think about Japan, like, oh, yeah, that part is Japan's, I like it, just people like harmonizing, right? Mm go back to Japan and the first one week, 10 days is good, but starting really like, no, I really don't like this way that much. <laughs> mm. just, uh, and then also the getting Japan, my home country became my imagination. Ah. The home, you like it, you want to see it in your brain. So every time I go there, I kind of really broke my heart. Mm. That was just my imagination. Yeah. Like, uh, so who am I? And then you come to Canada. The Canada is good part is just uh, I could be me. I don't have to pretend that much. When you watch that side of the people in Canada, they're all alive. Like, you know, bad way, good way. They're just like, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's beautiful. As an independent, it's beautiful. But when they get group, it's, oh, I don't know. They're so loud and just, yeah, different. And then talking about uh, not belonging anywhere is, okay, you don't belong to Japan anymore. You don't belong to Canada. But most like artists is like probably same. They're not belonging anywhere. They're alone. <laughs> Everybody likes to belonging somewhere, like art society or, you know, West Canada dance group or, you know, all those things. But... I like talking with someone not belonging anywhere. And then I could see the loneliness or aloneness. It's not a bad way or sad way, just you live by yourself in this big universe. Like I'm saying, mm. that's, you know, mm. going kind of things like, you know, cut the shoulder. And then that's what I like. Also, you know, when you make the each show, each dance, I always ask him why I'm doing this. That sense, like why I'm making this show. Do I have to make this? And do I have to make some, do I have to say something to someone? Mm. 
Okay? Like, otherwise, you can just, you could dance by yourself in the living room, and then, ah, oh, that feels good. That was the best. <laughs> <laughs> and then disappear. That's okay, right? But why I'm showing it to other people is like, each performer, if you really ask that always, like honestly, mm-hmm. you could say, oh, because I've become famous. I want to become good. And so people say, oh, you're good. You're a good dancer. Like, wow, so such an artist, right? And then, yeah, I'm an artist. That's good. Sounds good, artist. But th- that's okay, too. But to be really honest, I kept asking, why? Do you want to become rich? No, 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 with the dance. I'm not going to become rich. Do you want to become famous? Like, eh, I don't know. I don't think people become famous. It's contemporary dance. Maybe within the dance community. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kunji in the category. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's good. Uh, the, <laughs> when I bring up like Crystal Pite, like to, to some of my pals who aren't in the dance world, and yeah. I'm like, you can't get much bigger in the oh, dance yeah. world than Crystal Pite and Kid Pivot. And they're like, who? And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> This is like world superstar, like no yeah, crystal pint. But, but I, you know what? Someone know yeah, but anyway, so uh, forget about those and I kept asking for me at the end, it's like uh, wasn't that big answer, like oh, I won't perform because no like that, just like uh, okay, someone feel alone like the universe, you don't belong anywhere that moment. I just wanna share that feeling and then that's okay just i want to just tap the shoulder mm. that's all i doing it i think so if it's like really happy people like you know i'm so happy right, every day i guess it, they don't i don't need as an audience they're happy so they're okay but someone more edge someone woke up like you know why i'm waking up today like i don't have to anymore so when you, you know? see you, you're offering a sense of belonging it through art? I don't know. I'm just on the top the top of the shoulder. Is it connection? Would that be closer? Maybe connection of the people who don't belong anywhere. But because, I think because you are coming from the space of belonging on the stage, of like not belonging anywhere but on the stage. So from that, that place, that place, that moment. To reach out to others and share yeah. that. Yeah. One time, a long time ago, when I was learning the theater, this is like a graduation speech, he said, become artist. I want you guys to become artists, like burn yourself and then show the lights to the audience, other people, rather than you burn. And then most people want to have a spotlight on you to show, watch me, watch me. I'm Mm. good at my, right? Mm. Don't think about so much audience. Mm -hmm. It's not like really giving. I don't care about myself. I could burn myself just tonight and become ash. But if I give it to you something, little things, or tomorrow woke up and go, oh, okay, I will keep going again. That's the artist. That's what he said. It's like, oh, ah. that, I still remember that was 40 some years ago. That really connects with the idea of flow, the Japanese of, of being part of losing self. Exactly, I guess. But it's not sacrifice or anything. Maybe this is like a more like a Buddhist teaching way, probably. Yeah, forget about me, this nature, what's happening kind of things. I don't know. Uh, going through this, this experience of giving, uh, of welcoming those to this yeah. sense of belonging. Yeah. What's the message that you'd say? What do you, what, what do you want to say to those people who feel like they don't have a place to belong? I guess only I could do is like, I'm same feeling. Look at the stage. That's all I could say. Mm. I don't know, but when I was young, like, you know, 16, 17, got lots of difficult time, right? Those time, young time, like lots of difficult things happening. One thing is art is for me, like I go to a museum quite nice museum somehow like you know Van Gogh whenever just he was alone painting this didn't have money I don't know he tried to become famous but he just have to go in the field by himself and that makes me feel little strengths I could have like for me I guess I grew up the arts as like something giving me strength for the when you're weak or a poem 
reading some poet, I'm rereading Japanese poet, old poet, and then, wow, this person was really lonely, like, you know, 50 years ago, about talking about falls and leaves and stuff, but they still come back and then I could share with them, right? So when I think about me sitting as an audience, what do I want to see, me, you know? What do you need? Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to the artist who, having gone through it, is standing there in the rehearsal hall? Like when, they, when they're not sure what their voice is, when they're still searching for who they are and what they want to say, what would you say to them? Yeah, I don't know. I'm saying like, I've been doing it for this long time, but still, do I even have to say something? That's what I always like. Yeah, so do I really have to say something? Why we have to keep doing this? I mean, what does it feel like when, when the sand accumulates around the magnet? Oh, that point when the creating. Oh, the creating is like good. <laughs> you can't stop at that time. Every morning or night, the idea coming in, <laughs> they come so fast, I have to write it down. Well, then what, what, do you, what do you do when you're waiting for the magnet to drop and you're just looking at all this sand? How do you, how do you carry on looking for the next magnet? <laughs> That's a good point. After that, my magnet doesn't come. <laughs> Only coronavirus came. So. No, no. But this is one. You know those antenna, an antenna? Uh, yeah. Everyday antenna is important, don't you think so? Like rather than me, 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 just like listening, like a little seed here and there. And to have that little seed, I think without dance or without arts, like everyday life, I think you have to really live. You live like a uh, fool. Mm. And then you feel full, sadness, even happiness, and jealous, and all those disappointment, uh, you know, discouragement about yourself. But feel it really full. Those things, I think, will show in the stage, I hope, as a performer. Mm. Those little things come up, like, it's like a fume, like I said. That's the changing with a good performer and just, okay, good technical performer. <laughs> it sounds like the, the, you have an ability to feel full in your aloneness. Uh, yeah. Can you feel the same fullness and aliveness the way you're speaking about an onstage performer? You, you, can, you can feel it, you can see it. Is, is the same thing possible out in, in, on the streets? Yeah, and then you can make a story, right? It's fun. Like watching, like a sitting in a train. It used to be more fun before everybody's doing this, mm. uh, texting, whatever. Now it's all boring. Like everybody have the same position. Mm. Same thing. So this is so good. Like uh, I think I'm really think about this for the next piece. It just, mm. you know, just, uh, but do you like choreograph? Yes. You do? You get excited to like make movement? Y yeah, but uh, my, my movement is all fueled by story or, or the piece. Okay, you know? okay. And like to honor the, eco I love that, the ecology of the performance, the ecology of the work. It, it knows what it needs. It knows what it asks for. So before you go, to, okay, you could do rehearsal studio, right? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna make something. Before you make movement, do you have this story or scene or feeding image? I'd say usually I will have something to go. I'll, I'll have already dropped a magnet into the sand oh. before I, usually I'll, before I get to the rehearsal hall. Yeah. Uh, and then from that magnet, it'll suggest whatever, however many possibilities. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's a hundred. Mm. Whereas other performances right from the get go, it's like, I've got it. I've got this one thing it's going to be beginning to end. Oh yeah. Sometimes. Uh, and, and it's all about the ecology of the piece. And, and, and sometimes it knows it's got this full internal system. And sometimes it's like, I don't know, we're over here somewhere. Mm. You find it, you know? And, and so it, it, it absolutely ranges. Yeah. Too bad. You can't be my assistant director. Too bad. You can't be mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say, could you direct me? 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you could. Sure. Why don't you make, I could uh, make a grant and then he's going to direct me about 58 years old performers life, like show. I'm in. I think you're going to make I'm, a good. I'm absolutely in. Yeah. That's it. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for the time, for the thoughts. This is the best interview I never had. Thank you. Ah, thanks, Hiro. You know, I appreciate that. You're really good at listening. Yeah. You're good at speaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Up and just dance. <laughs> All right, that's our episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to Sounds Japanese Canadian to Me, stories from the stage. A huge thank you to our wonderful guest, Hiromoto Ide. Now, this podcast is co-presented by the National Nikkei Museum and Cultural Center. My name is Kunji Ikeda, and it's an honor to host these sessions. Please feel free to check out more of my own work at www.cloudsway.ca. As always, if you enjoy the podcast, we would be honored if you could like and subscribe and share the podcast with someone else who may enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.